Yeah, this is the same gas station from the last video about serial killer Otis Tool. It kind of intersects with this one. In fact, the last two videos are going to intersect with this one. The, uh, the case with the husband and wife that were murdered over in Graceville and then the uh, Otis Tool killing and today's video. They all one big circle and we'll, I'll, you'll see as we get into the video. If you remember about halfway through yesterday's video, I talked about and I showed you this gas station and I talked about how uh, the local sheriff at the time, Sheriff John McDaniel, his father was shot and killed right inside of that door right there. It intersects here with today's video because the sheriff's father was murdered right there. But in today's story, we're going to talk about the sheriff's wife, Melly McDaniel, who was also murdered many years later. It was by a different person. It was not by Otis Tool. It was by a different person. So today I'm going to talk about the murder of Melly McDaniel and the absolute devastation inflicted upon this one man, this one sheriff, John P. McDaniel III, who lost his father to a murder and his wife to a murder. This story was submitted by viewer Michelle Searcy. This will also be the last fan submitted episode this week anyways. We'll do some more, but for this week this is going to be the last one because it's time for us to leave for our next adventure. We leave and one day for that next adventure it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to get there and show you where we're going. Uh, we're going to be going to many different places. I, I, I just can't wait. It's going to be awesome. But before we go, one last fan submitted episode. The murder of Melly McDaniel is today. It was in December of 1980 when John McDaniel III was about to take over as the sheriff of Jackson County, Florida. Little did he know the circumstances that he would face during his time as a sheriff. He was sworn in in mid-January of 1981. Just a couple of days after he was sworn in as sheriff, on January the 30th, his father was murdered at the hands of Otis Toole and Henry Lucas as they attempted to rob this gas station here behind me. For Sheriff McDaniel, the murder of his father, that was his very first case as sheriff. At the time, I'm sure that he never envisioned though, exactly 28 years later to the day, he would get ready to retire. But before he could retire, his very last case would be the cold-blooded murder of his own wife. I mean, can you even imagine that? His very first case as sheriff of Jackson County had to investigate was the murder of his father. Then he, he goes 20 some odd years investigating murders. I think they said there was about 50 murders in this area over that time. He got to investigate all those and just as he's leaving, headed out the door, his wife is murdered. So his very first case was his father's murder and his very last case was his wife's murder. I mean, can you even imagine? He always said that his father's murder actually made him a better sheriff because he knew what it was like. He knew what to say to victims' families when notifying them that a loved one had died. He knew what it was like to experience something like that as a cop and as a victim. Prior to that Otis Tool case, I did the story about the McRae murders over in Graceville, Florida. Well, that is also part of Jackson County. Sheriff John McDaniel was the sheriff here when that happened. If you remember, in that episode, I told you that 
The original investigator on the McRae murder case has now retired, but continues to work on this case to this day, trying to solve it, trying to find answers. And he has vowed not to stop until he finds out what happens or until he dies. That was Sheriff John McDaniel. But I've already talked about the Otis, his father dying with, by, at the hands of Otis Tool, and I've already talked about the McCray murders. You can go back and watch those videos if this is the first one you're seeing and you want to know more. I'm going to move on to the topic of this episode, which is his wife's murder, his very last case as Sheriff of Jackson County, and the circumstances of her death. And, I mean, really, the circumstances of her death, it could have been ripped right out of a Hollywood movie. And uh, you'll see as I tell the story, but I can just see it in my head with Liam Neeson playing Sheriff McDaniel. Man, I could so see that. At any rate, on January the 30th of 2007, Sheriff McDaniel's wife, Millie McDaniel, was gunned down along with another one of McDaniel's sheriff deputies right outside of his home here in Mariana, Florida. Millie McDaniel, was a sweet lady. She also worked right here at the Jackson County Sheriff's Department as a victim's advocate. If a family had someone murdered, she would come behind the police to help the families cope with the loss. She was also the one who would stand up and speak for the victims and the victim's families during court proceedings. All of her friends and neighbors described Millie and John as the perfect couple. They were nice and loving. They were passionate about their jobs. They had only been married for five years, but they seemed as if they had been together for their entire lives. The day of January 30th, Millie was off. She had gone to a local grocery store so that she could cook dinner for her and her family. On her way to the grocery store, she spoke with Sheriff McDaniel on the phone. As she left the grocery store, she called him again. He was actually on the phone with her as all of it unfolded. As Millie approached her driveway here, she noticed that a car had followed her. They followed her all the way up into the driveway. And as I said, she was on the phone with Sheriff McDaniel, who quickly dispatched the nearest officer to this location. Millie lived here in this house, right here with Sheriff McDaniel. Then all of a sudden, all the sheriff hears is screaming. Millie was screaming bloody murder. By that time, Sheriff McDaniel had called for all units to get here, and he had also left, headed this way himself. It was at around that same time that Sheriff Deputy Harold Altman pulled up to find two suspects had not left yet, but they had already shot and killed Melly McDaniel. Deputy Altman engaged in a firefight with the two suspects, but it was two on one. So only after a few rounds, Deputy Altman was shot and killed. But before the perpetrators could get away, the entire sheriff's department had emerged on Sheriff McDaniel's house. They also engaged with the suspects, shooting and killing 60-year-old Lionel Sands and 54-year-old Daniel Brown. It happened right here. The firefight, the murder of Millie McDaniel, the murder of Deputy Alt Harold Altman, it all happened right here. If you remember, I said it could have been straight out of a movie, and that's because Lionel Sands targeted Millie out of retaliation. He was being investigated by Sheriff McDaniel for murder. You see, just months prior, Lionel Sands' wife, Gail, was found murdered in their family pool. Lionel was the sheriff's number one suspect. It was believed that Lionel had killed his wife for insurance money. The insurance company wouldn't pay out because of the ongoing investigation. I mean, obviously they weren't going to pay him if he murdered her. So, somehow, he convinced Daniel Brown to help him, and they went after revenge against the sheriff. Like I said, straight out of a movie. Even though uh, Millie and Deputy Altman's killers were shot, the investigation of Lionel Sands' wife became cold because their suspect had now died. I can't even pretend to know the pain that Sheriff McDaniel has had to endure. Losing a parent or a spouse separately 
is already truly devastating, and he had to survive them both. It's it's absolutely. I, I just I don't even know what to say. God bless you, Sheriff McDaniel. That's all I can say. In an interesting turn of events, though, a judge awarded Sheriff McDaniel all of Lionel and Gail's property. They owned a house and a piece of property here in Mariana, Florida, and a judge awarded it all to Sheriff McDaniels. At the time, it was former Sheriff McDaniels. I guess it was in compensation because Melly was killed. Uh, I'm not sure 100% on why it was awarded to him. Even some government accounts that Gail had in her name that were worth money, they were all awarded to former Sheriff McDaniel. There was no numbers given in the reports to say how much those accounts were worth. It was like a four, some 401ks or an IRA, stuff like that. There was no amounts given, so I have no clue on how much those accounts were worth, how much money it was worth. But I do know that he also received their land, the house and the land that it's set on. I'm not sure if he still owns it or if he sold it and got out from underneath it. I don't know what happened to it either. I just know that the judge awarded all of it to the former sheriff in compensation for him losing his wife. Now, obviously, there's there's no compensation that would be worth what Sheriff McDaniels lost, but I guess it was an attempt. That is going to do it for this episode on Sheriff John P. McDaniel and the murders of his father and his wife on the exact same day almost 28 years apart. My heart goes out to Sheriff McDaniel and his family for the pain that they've had to endure. Thank you all for watching. You just don't know how much I appreciate it. Um, our next episode is going to be a travel episode as we embark on our next adventure, our biggest adventure so far this year, and I think it's going to be incredible. I think you'll all enjoy it. Thank you all so much. I'll see you the day after tomorrow. I hope you all have a great day and stay safe.